Today we're talking about the 10 things I hate about my Turbo Camaro. So the first thing I hate about my Turbo Camaro is that it's freaking broken. We went racing and well, we ended up hurting the engine, hurt a few spark plugs, uh, crank sensor went bad. Some other stuff might have happened. We're about to find out. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna get the fluids drained out of this thing and get ready to start pulling the engine so I can get it out and figure out what's wrong with it. So if you guys are new to the channel, while I get the oil out, I'll go ahead and give you a little back history on it. I built the car before I even did YouTube videos or anything. Kind of inspired me to make YouTube videos uh, because so many people were wanting to build something similar. So I was like, man, if I had all those videos, I could have shown what I did. So we're gonna take a look here and see what the oil looks like after I'm pretty sure that it either hurt a ring or a piston or something uh, this last time out. I mean, if you guys can see that, it actually doesn't look too bad. I'll take a look at the oil filter and see if there's any major flakes in there. Kind of give me a little telltale, but either way, I'm going to pull the motor out. I'm going to go ahead and talk about the second thing I hate about my Turbo Camaro is, well, we're under the car, we're draining the oil, and I have no engine diaper on the car. Multiple safety concerns that I have with the car. I mean, it's pretty safe. Everything's uh, to the SFI spec and everything's pretty good, but uh, it does need an engine diaper. Also, the oil pressure sensor on this car is a factory one. I had a car on the dyno. It lost it and started puking oil out of it. And I was like, man, if that was on the track, that could have been devastating. That is definitely some things I want to address while the car is apart. There's also a bunch of other little things on the car that I want to step up the safety on. I just went ahead and popped the drain. And, uh, I mean, the oil don't look bad that's coming out of it, but there is. Which, it had some of this on there last time, too, is this, like, graphite-looking stuff on the um, little magnet that's on the into this so there's some gross stuff on there uh not quite sure if that's just some assembly stuff that's floating around in the motor or what the deal is but we're gonna find out soon i don't see any major chunks coming off of it but we will uh we'll get this all pulled apart if you guys have ever drained 2050 oil you know it's like syrup and it takes quite a while to come out the third thing i hate about the camaro is that it has a 390 rear gear and it actually I liked it a lot for eighth mile, no prep style stuff, but now that we're starting to do a lot more streetcar stuff, and I'd like to take this thing on race week, it makes it a little difficult to do more than about 60, 65 on the highway. So that is something else that will be changing. You're probably gonna go to a 350 or 325, most likely a 350, because that's kind of what's perfect for quarter mile stuff without going too far. Uh, so that's gonna be another thing that gets changed on the car. And the fourth thing I hate about this thing, it is so heavy. I mean, heck, the heavy duty lift even fights it. But really, uh, it still has the factory dash, radio, heat, and the AC. All of it's in here other than the AC stuff. The heater still works in it. Stock column, door panels, power windows, locks. I mean, some of this stuff I want to keep. I love having the power windows, power locks I'm not so worried about. I'm not sure really what it takes to delete some of that. It does have Kirkies. But even the middle console is still there. I want to gut all that. Just try to ditch as much weight out of this thing. It is a T-top car. Uh, so that doesn't help the fact that this thing is heavy. The race stars, I mean, I could go to lighter wheels. Still has factory brakes on it and all of that. So there is a ton of things on this car that could definitely be lightened up. The car does have lightweight front and rear bumper supports. This car still has the factory A-arms and everything in it. It's just, it's a heavy car. This thing weighs like 3,600 pounds. The last time I weighed, I think it was 3,590 with me in it uh it's heavy i need this thing to be you know at least like down in the 3300 range when you're racing fox bodies that are 3,000 pounds it's just it's so hard to compete so has all the glass which is some of the rules of the classes i want to run you got to have the glass but we got to try to figure some stuff out still has all the windshield wipers and all of that in the car all this stuff i want to cut and get rid of ditch all of the windshield wipers go to a lightweight column and all of that and that should help lighten this thing up we go ahead and kick out the car and get ready to drain the radiator. If you guys are not familiar with the combo in the car, it's a stock block LQ4 4 inch stroke crank. So it's a 408 Trick Flow 220 heads, Billet S488 Borg Warner Turbo. The combo's done well. It has went like high eights, letting off at the uh, 1000 foot mark and went like 891. Probably had an 870 in it. That's what I was trying to do at the end of the year. And well, didn't go so well. I'd love to put a six bolt block in this thing at some point. I do plan on selling this turbo here, possibly changing up the headers and going to twins. I'd like to stick them up here or something. I don't know yet, but that's kind of the plan. Get this all torn down, go ahead and go with that. 
once the engine's out, it'll be a lot easier to pull out the, you know, the heater core and all that. It still has the power brakes, pull all that out, get rid of the ABS module. So there's a lot of little things that I can do to also help that issue of having so much weight in the car. Let's see how big of a mess we're gonna make here. It's gonna spray it all over the car. Maybe. Maybe I can let it slow drain. Not making a huge mess. Nope. It's gonna go all the way out and then it's gonna spray everywhere. There we go. That won't be too bad. So the fifth thing that I hate about this car will be the crank sensor. For whatever reason, I've lost like three crank sensors in this setup. One time it lifted a ring land. This time I think it led to it getting hurt. Uh, and other times, I think maybe it's been four, uh, it like happened while just like cruising and I noticed it, so I swapped it. So I guess Gen 3's stock style reluctor wheels and stuff, there's been people and apparently I'm one of them that's plagued with like a crank sensor issue. So you can either go to like a 58 tooth or what they usually recommend is going to like a billet reluctor wheel on the crank. So I don't know if that means a whole new crank or if you can weld this one on or swap reluctor wheels, that's something I still need to look at. But that is something that I do not like about this combo that has fought me is the reluctor wheel issue. Oh, we got a mess going on. We got a mess. It starts draining along the mount for the radiator and then it starts dripping out further and further over. It's been a minute since I pulled this out like this, but now I'm remembering good times. The sixth thing that I don't like on this car is the exhaust. So I built this custom exhaust. It comes out, it wraps up along the fender. It actually kind of pushes on the fender. That's why the gap's kind of off here. I had to smash it because after I got it built, it's as far up in the fender as you can, but it would even rub. So I had to raise the car a little bit and it's still not the safest. This is another one of them safety issues is the exhaust comes up right here. And then whenever you go through a dip or whatever, uh, it touches. So I figure if the car starts to wheelie or whatever, I definitely don't want it under full power to come up touch here. So I'm gonna get rid of this, figure out a new way to route the exhaust. If I end up doing twins up front or something, maybe bring in the bullhorns or whatever out right here, just an exhaust, do something, try to be clean. I did like the exhaust uh, as far as it did knock some sound out of it and everything, but it came right around, came down. There's a little muffler here. So I had a exhaust past the firewall, which if you guys watch much of the no prep stuff, that was kind of a true street rule was exhaust past firewall, which was nice to have. At least it fit all the rules, but I'm really not running any of that anymore. So on to the next thing. We're flowing now. <laughs> oh, always a freaking mess. Just trying to catch all the all the streams of fluid. Just right, just the right size pan so far. That moves over one inch where we're gonna have a mess, but well, we already got a mess. When I originally built this car, I set it up with Bosch 160s. These are like old, I think they're set up for like gas, uh, propane injection style setup or whatever they consider it or call it. Uh, so 160 pound injectors running E85 with twin Walbro 450s in the back of the car. This car is out of fuel system at this point on E. I also didn't run an intercooler. A lot of people don't realize there is no intercooler on this thing. So the pipe just goes down, turns around, comes up, goes into the intake. The only thing I have is a methanol kit to help cool the intake charge. This is the methanol line here. Uh, the methanol pump sits right there. So the line comes out, feeds it, and goes right into the intake right here. This is the one nozzle right before the IAT sensor. This thing would run in the neighborhood of like 270 degree intake temps. If you didn't have the methanol kit on, with the methanol kit, it'd be like 160, 170. So it'd knock 100 degrees out of the intake charge. Helped, still not the most efficient. Once we did things like the Buick, twin air to water, C16, it just 85 degree intake temps, even after like a half mile, I think is maybe near 100. So much more efficient, so much better. Plus these injectors have a 1.6 minimum opening time on them. So they are terrible. They have to be on at least like E to even idle well. If you put gas in this thing, it'd be super rich. It's rich idling on just E. So I wanna get rid of these injectors. So that would be number seven of things that I hate on this car is the injectors. Get rid of those, get some good high impedance, injectors where I could run E or gasoline or whatever I want. They'll idle well on them. They'll do good. They'll just be a much nicer, better, more efficient and designed injector for what I'm trying to do and not just an old one that works. And with that happened to be on E to run those injectors, that is the eighth thing that I hate about this car is putting ethanol in the car. If it's cold here in Colorado, if I want to go cruise it, I can't just pull up to a pump, 
throw fuel in it and go drive it. So I want to set this car up to where I can put regular pump gas in it, drive it and enjoy it. The Buick is amazing when we can just leave a track, throw pump gas in it, don't even change the tune and just keep heading down the road. So if I'm gonna change those two things, the fuel and the injectors to be able to run gasoline, that brings up the next thing. Number nine is no intercooler on the car. After playing with the Buick and multiple other cars that I've tuned, this thing not having an intercooler, I'm losing a ton of efficiency and I know that. So I need to get either an air, big air to air, a big air to water. I'd love to do like an air to water, like a sheer fab intake on this thing. If I can get it to fit underneath the glass once the cow's cut, we'll see. Or do a mounted intercooler on this thing. It's gonna kind of suck doing the ice and all that, but if you wanna be on that level, that's kind of what you gotta do to play with those cars. So that's kind of the next step with this is putting this thing on good fuel. C16, yes, it's expensive. It's like $100 for five gallons, but it is so worth it when it's just simplified. It's clean, it's consistent fuel, it's nice. Even on E, there's people that will run pump, and I do not recommend running pump E85 on any combo like this because uh, it's dirty. Pump E is so gross. I cleaned a ton of injectors that are just terrible. So if you're going to do E, at least run it out of the barrel, but I'm kind of moving on from that. And I'd like to run just some normal C16, some good race gas or something similar to that in this combo. So we'll see what I end up choosing, but that is kind of the plan or what is in my head right now. All right, so big mess here. Not too bad. Got at least the fluid out of the radiator. Uh, always fun wiping this stuff up. We'll get on to number 10, which is probably the biggest thing that I want to change on the car that's been bugging me since the day. I pretty much built the car since the first startup, since the uh, first day of finishing it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's bugged me, and I just know that it can be so much nicer. So the final part of what I want to talk about on this car and thing that I hate the most. Most of it can be summed up by this little area right here is the wiring. So I have all this crazy wiring coming up from the back. Uh, all these hot leads right here come over to these relays. Some of this is for trans brake. This is before some of the Holly I knew how to wire some stuff. I was just learning. It's worked. Yes, it has worked. I have not really had any wiring issues with the car. There's just so many little things with the wiring that I don't love. The Holly right now is actually tied up behind the uh, glove box here. It's mounted behind it. All the wiring comes down into here. You can see all the extra wiring and all of that stuff. So the plan is, you know, gut the dash, get rid of all the stuff behind it, mount the ECU, come up with a little relay board. I'm going to completely gut the factory harness. This thing has the full factory harness and I just have tapped into it to like kind of you know signal the fuel pump and do all that stuff as you guys can see all these boxes are still in here tons of extra weight the actual main harness that would come over and feed the ecu in this thing is cut away somewhere i think that's some of it right there it's just like cut and ends so definitely not ideal for what i want and it just could be so much nicer i'm going to completely rewire the whole car headlights tail lights simplify everything that's part of it with getting rid of the column, getting rid of all of this. I won't need the multi-switch anymore on the column. All this can go away. None of that will be needed. The lights, you know, just put them on a manual thing. I really don't know if I want to put them on like a big switch panel or not, but that's some of the stuff that I'll have to figure out as I go. Show you guys another part. Gosh dang it, like that thing is so heavy. <laughs> the fuel pump, it has that little trap door deal. It comes over. I don't love the two intake fuel pumps. I'd like to do a single like five gallon a minute. If you have one that fails, that could hurt stuff. So I'm still trying to decide if I want to go to like a tank setup in the car and then you got to build a firewall. I'm not sure on that. We'll more on that later. As you guys can see, some of the wiring back here is not terrible. It does have the on off switch. The ECU comes back. But even the fuel pump wiring right here, this is the relays. They come over from the fuel pump to send it, but the power, instead of just coming right here to the battery and getting fuel pump power, they run all the way to the front of the car and then to get the main power because that's the way it was set up for a battery in the front. All this was wired before I ever knew what the heck I was doing and know how to wire stuff. So now I can go back and clean a lot of it up, simplify it, make it much nicer. I'm still debating on if I'm gonna keep the Holly in the car. I, I'm tempted to go to a different style ECU, something that forces me to learn and try something different. I'm good, I love the Holly. I have plenty of other cars that I can play with that have a Holly in it. I mean, Bernie even has a Holly, the Buick has a Holly. So there's plenty of other things I can do, but I thought about trying to put something like a Haltech or a FuelTech in this thing just to, uh, you know, try something new, 
learn that. Let me know what you guys think you'd like to see in uh, Salty. I think it'd be cool to try a new ECU in this thing. There you go. That's 10 things that I hate about my Turbo Camaro. I mean, I love the car. It's been a blast. I think that'll be it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and gave you some insight if you're doing a similar build. Let me know what you guys think below. Leave me a comment, thumbs up. Just appreciate everybody supporting the channel and the videos. And if you want to see more, you know what to do. See you guys next time. Let's see how it looks here. Ooh, that's a little gray. A little gray and looks like a lot of little shiny stuff in there. Oh, that's, that's no good. Well, we'll find out soon what's going to happen with it.